Thank you for joining us today for this very important topic of suicide prevention. And this month we're focusing on veterans. So thank you for joining us and please let us know in the chat where you are joining us from. My name is Dina Mitchell and I am the founder and executive director of the Realize Foundation. And our mission is to reduce suicide statistics across humanity. In October, 2020, we launched the hashtag save a life challenge, which is all about hashtag have the conversation. Our theory is instead of targeting only humans struggling with ideation, that we spread awareness and education to all humans. So when the person struggling is ready to have the conversation, these are people around them. I'm sorry, there are people around them that will understand how to listen and be supportive. In turn, we stop the stigma. This will cause people to get help when they need it and ultimately reduce the suicide statistics. You can learn more at our website at www.realizefoundation.org, or you can just search hashtag save a life challenge. So this month, as I said, we are focusing on the veteran community. We are aware how dire the situation is for veterans and that it has been for some time. So today I am talking with Jared H. Smith, who is an, a career Navy commander and one of our board members. If you have questions for us, please post them in the comments and we will try to answer them live or after, after this video, we can answer them in the post. Um, so thank you, Jared, for being here. And I'd love for you to introduce yourself more formally and tell us why this cause is so important to you. Uh, great. Thanks, Dina. For Thank you so much for having me today. So yeah, as uh, Dina mentioned, I am uh, a commander the US, in the US Navy, uh, about 18 and a half years of service. And uh, I've got a beautiful wife uh, for all the military spouses out there today. This is Military Spouse Appreciation Day. And we do thank you because without you, we definitely couldn't do what uh, what we're tasked with doing. So uh, a great shout out to the to the military spouses <clears throat> that support all of us. Uh, we've got four four kids, ages 12, 11, 7, and 5, and a, uh, uh, two dogs. So it's a circus around my place these days. And um, yeah, pro professionally, I'm a, I'm a U.S. Navy logistician, Supply Corps, and I have served in the submarine force, uh, naval aviation, uh, the Navy expeditionary community, as well as with the U.S. Army uh, once in my career. So uh, aside from that and, and everything, anything on everything I say today is are, are my personal views alone and not representative of the DOD, uh, United States Navy and or any U.S. government agency, too. So now that that's out of the way, um, what I'm passionate about is this topic. And I have launched a startup uh, that's referred to as Liberty Accelerator Program. And that's a uh, that, that's a program providing the solutions to the, the, the challenges that I perceive we have, which relates to my own journey on this topic. And a few years ago, um, like most of us, my identity was tied up in my rank, uh, service branch and area of expertise with respect to the platform, the weapons platforms that, uh, that I've supported over my time in military service. And I had a, a, a pretty rough go of it for a while because I got what I perceived to be a fitness report based on a, uh, a stumble that I had during a staff assignment and uh, I reached a pretty low point in my life and uh, so much so that I didn't I didn't think that I was valuable on this earth and um, luckily I utilized this utilized the defense health agency resources that are available to us to help bring me through that mental challenge and um, have come roaring back over the past couple of years with respect to fighting this battle, actually this war that we've got concerning mental health um, and then trying to assist the military family um, in preparation for their inevitable transition off of active duty. So that's uh, that's me in a nutshell, Dina. <laughs> well, thank you. Thank you for sharing, Jared. I want you to tell everybody more about your, or your organization you're starting for people and um, how that can be I don't know if it's available yet or if it's something still in the works, but let people know what it is and why it can be helpful to them. Absolutely. So this idea originated about a year ago, uh, actually uh, in a few weeks, it'll be a year ago because 
uh, on Facebook, the 22 day push up challenge was happening yeah. to bring awareness to the 22 service members and veterans per day that are taking their own lives. And, um, and that prompted me to act. So in, in that I decided, Hey, I could, I can complain and moan and not do anything or I can do something. And, and out of that um, prompting, I created something that I call the commissioned officer's guide because I've walked in officer's shoes and I won't pretend to know uh, what it's like to be an enlisted military family. Um, but I have walked the officer's shoes and I've supported the line as well as uh, interfaced with the staff corps in order to support our missions. Uh, so that led me on a, on a fun journey over the past year, getting to use my, my imagination, the knowledge that I've acquired over the years, along with my experience to come up with this idea of the Liberty Accelerator program. And uh, with the Liberty Accelerator program, it is a for-profit business um, because one of the challenges that I perceive um, that we have in this space is, is being owed something. Um, and I think that when people are paying for a service, they're going to pay attention um, as opposed to having these dozens upon hundreds upon thousands of free offerings out there um, and not knowing really where to start. And then once we're equipped with something that's free, we might not fully utilize it to its uh, to its full extent. So I'm taking a, a radical approach to this entire matter. Um, but to get back on track just a little bit, the Liberty Accelerator program has what I call within it projects. And I call these these projects Liberty Acceleration projects, transition acceleration projects throughout the year. Uh, because the, the the program itself is a multi-year event um, we're told in service that that military transition is a two-year or less um, effort and I, I completely disagree with that and the military transition planning starts upon completion of the training pipelines and if you didn't intentionally start then you got to start now uh, because the, the the change that we undergo through our basic and commissioning training pipelines is significant we are constantly told to take care of our people, um, yet we, we very rarely do we stop and think, hey, are my leaders taking care of me? And that's an exposed open flank that I, I believe is, is detrimental to our own individual well, well-being, is detrimental to our military family readiness, and that collectively means it's detrimental to the force. So we are taking a, a very radical approach to equipping the military family to live life fully alive in service and far beyond. Uh, so Dean, I'll turn it back over to you for any questions about any of that, uh, and then we can continue on. Well, I think when I first met you, Jared, I was so inspired by your um, courage for one to talk about this because, you know, so many people in the world don't want to talk about mental health or suicide prevention and the, the highest statistics are in adult males. And I think being an adult male and being in the military as a leader is makes it even harder to have these conversations. So I hope that by us having this conversation today, it will give others the courage to speak up and speak out and get the help they need or be willing to have the conversation with people around them that need the support. So thank you for that. No, um, I, I really appreciate you engaging me in, in the discussion uh, because the fact of the matter is our, our culture perpetuates, hey, suck it up, buttercup, you know, meet the little mission requirements of today and support your operational platform and or the staff that you're on. Um, the fact of the matter is we're, we're way too focused on physical health in the service and not not focused enough on mental health and encour encouraging our people to take care of themselves physically. But not only that, we have got to also encourage them to take care of themselves mentally and emotionally. Uh, without those, those, three, um, those three aspects of health being covered down on, uh, mm -hmm. we're setting ourselves up for heartache and not knowing who to turn to when, we, when we're either told that we need to get help or that we realize it ourselves. Uh, so the only way we can overcome this is by talking about it. And until we start talking about it and then acting on the resources that are at our fingertips, uh, we're going to keep getting more of the more of the same. I agree 100 percent. And I think that when we talk about being healthy as a person, 
we're talking about physically, like you said, and we're not talking about our whole self health, which is what's important. And we have to, you know, it's mind, body, and soul, not just your physical body. And so it has, we have to change our mindset around what does healthy mean? And it does include your brain and your mind. And, you know, I always say that, you know, if somebody breaks their arm, you are empathetic to them. You help them open the door because their their arm's broken or it's okay that they go to the hospital or they miss work. But when it is an invisible problem like mental health, then people don't, you know, like you said, it's suck it up buttercup because they can't see what you're dealing with. So it's so important. Yeah, great points. And I'm glad you brought up uh, what, I, what I heard you say is whole health. And I, I have entered what I call my, my liberty battle window, which was the 24 month point prior to my military retirement date or what I like to call pension taking start date. And um, it kind of hit me in the forehead when I received a transition guide and in maybe chapter seven or section seven of that transition guide was the veteran affairs whole health card. And I sat back and I thought, now why didn't I get issued a whole health card with my seat bag going on 20 years ago? Because it clears day talks about mental health in there and the physical health aspect is one, you know, one small part of that, of that pie. And I, I really, I really believe that if we can equip our service men and women with these tools, while also opening up the discussion about this matter, then that's going to be one aspect of us, of us overcoming this challenge and winning this, this mental health war. Um, and like I said, it's, it's one aspect of, of what I think are a couple that are causing these problems. And um, looping back around to, to the Liberty Accelerator program, we kind of frame it up in a three tier model. One is whole health. The other is status of self. And then the last is wealth. I mean, not what you would typically think of as wealth either, but I believe that those, those three areas come together to make somebody decide that they, they no longer want to stick around mm -hmm. or they don't have enough value to add to this world or they're just done. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately we lo we're losing people every day because of that. Um, now, like I said, three pillars, right? Whole health, status of self and wealth. And those all reside on a foundation of relationships. And that foundation is either built of sand or it's built of rock. And those relationships are what's going to make somebody never, ever decide to leave those people behind. But with weak or no relationships present or from your past, you're all alone. Kind of like a lone ranger out there wandering in the, in the wilderness. And um, our mantra all these decades has been leave no man behind. And I'm not sure why we're leaving people behind now. That's a really good point. Really good point. I think that it's, um, you know, for those of you who don't know my story, I survived a suicide attempt and did not speak about it for 23 years. And so I, um, that is the whole reason that I started this foundation. And I think that, you know, my whole theory is that the thousands of organizations that are trying to prevent suicide are doing great work, but we're not making progress and we have to do something differently. And so that is why I want to target all humans to be more aware and educated about suicide prevention and mental health. Because like Clint said on our December panel that we did, he said, you know, it's about building that net around you. So when you fall, there's people there to catch you. And I thought that was a great analogy. So if we are educating and making aware all the people that are around these people struggling, it's going to build that net to catch them. And they have to feel comfortable enough to open up and talk about what they're dealing with and talk about they, that they don't feel enough and they don't feel worthy and they don't think they matter. And that if they do decide to take their life, there are people that care deeply about them and will take the rest of their life wondering why they couldn't have helped. So I hope 
that this reaches people to understand, you know, even if you're not the one struggling, there is somebody, you know, in your life that is. And if you could reach out or talk or just make it known that you're open to talking about mental health, then somebody would feel comfortable reaching out to you. So, Jared, do you have any any last thoughts you would like people to take away from our conversation today? Yeah, Denny, you're, you're exactly right. It's all about building a net or a web or what we're getting at here is, is community. And there's hundreds and thousands of communities being formed out there. One of them needs you. I'm of the position that you as an individual are doing that community a disservice by not reaching out and joining to provide the value that you have got for that community. And if you are healthy, happy, and living life fully alive, assess your, assess your network, assess those around you, starting with your family, then going back out to your maybe extended family and then out into your uh, recreational and social life and then the work life and just ask somebody how they're doing. And you'll be amazed at how, how, how that simple question could change somebody's life. And maybe you're in a working environment now where you don't, you don't know anybody very well. And I like to say that the best question you can start with is who are you? Right. Just ask, who are you? Cause they're more than the job and whatever they're doing right now. They've, they've got family either at home or extended. And there's a, it's an easy question to open up conversation. So that's, uh, that's all I've got. Uh, let me do, let me, let me also caveat that with respect to Liberty Accelerator, it is being offered to ranks 04 and below at no cost for another year and a half as I beta run my processes and the content of what, uh, what I'm offering. Uh, however, for 05s and above that are most likely well within their retirement window, it is at, it is a, a, a cost service right now so that I can help support uh, my operations in getting this thing launched so we can go um, go change the world. And my, my goal is for officers, families to participate. And once they are equipped to in, equip their people and officer and enlisted with the knowledge and information as well. And eventually I'll have senior enlisted um, leaders who are running these small groups of military families in order to equip them for health, self, and wealth uh, so they can, can live their lives fully alive in service and then intentionally and formatively plan for that inevitable liber liberty battle and their return to society so we can hit the ground running and um, get out there and, and make a difference because heaven knows we've got a lot of work ahead of us in this country right now and we uh us coming out of service need to come out of it ready to ready to contribute and not and not and not be dependent but thanks deanna that's uh that's all i had for you thanks jared for for having this conversation with me today and for your service to our foundation and thank you to all our viewers and we'd love to hear from you and hear your comments or questions or if you'd like to participate in one of these conversations or panel discussions please reach out to us um, through the Facebook group or LinkedIn. Um, and as we all understand, the percent of humans struggling with mental health this past year is unprecedented. So please reach out to those close to you and have the conversation. Let them know you were there, even if it's just to listen. You don't always have to know what to say. Um, sometimes people just need someone to really listen to them and be there. So with that said, you can follow this page for more live conversations and discussions as we will have a different topic each month. So this month is veterans, June will be first responders, and July will be youth and parents. So you can find our website at realizefoundation.org or just Google hashtag save a life challenge and you will find it. Um, I hope you will subscribe and donate if you are able. So remember, Save a Life Challenge is all about having the conversation. See y'all next time.